You're listening to Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, you uh, probably know me from such works as The Office and Extras. Uh, uh, Stephen being my um, co-writer and co-director on those things. For those people who are not so aware of Carl Pilkington, um, he was our producer, sort of given to us when we first started on uh, XFM. Um, and uh, you're thinking, well, why are we doing a podcast? Why are we doing a podcast for for, for no money? Is um, there no money? There's, no. It's free, isn't it? It's free download. But this this is the, this yeah, this is what I'm, I'm here to answer. Mm. It's because I like to be in a room with Carl Pilkington. Mm. You know, like some people go and help sort of chimps. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. Well, some they people, go to the, the you know, the, yeah, the, the jungles and, and things. And yeah. help out little sort of endangered Dian species. Dian Fossey or whatever. Exactly, You're yeah. very much the Dian Fossey of the, of of the, the, of the Manchester of, scene. Of <laughs> the, of the uh, little bald mank world. <laughs> and Carl Pilkington is, is an ongoing experiment for me, because I've seen him blossom from an idiot into an imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I, wa I want to see it through. Look at the way he's looking at us through the glass. Mm -hmm. Look at that. He's got a perfectly round head. Um, and that's why I'm doing this, um, Podcast or bodcast, as I'm going to call it in um, his honour, little round-headed bod type freak. If you're not familiar with bod, we can maybe put up a picture of bod, the popular cartoon kids character. Go to RickyGervais.com and you will see a picture of Carl and a picture of bod. And you draw your own conclusions as to the likeness. Carl, what do you think about all this? That's all right. Are you excited by this new technology? What podcasts? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's just, I mean, we are living in that sort of era now, aren't we? That like, you need to. Yeah, to listen to stuff on demand when you want it and stuff. I know yeah. you, you were, you're not a fan of the iPod in general, are you, or any of the MP3 things? You're concerned. Uh, it's, I'm warming to it, but this is what's amazing about Carl. Even though he's talking about things like MP3 players, computers, uh, iPods, he sounds like he's he was found in a glacier and, and thawed out. <laughs> yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And sort of taught to yeah. speak. We're, we're a couple of high school guys who <laughs> found him, and we're, taking, we're trying to ingratiate him in the uh, in the gang, trying <laughs> yeah. to pass him off as someone from the modern day. No, I no. But, but my thing with with iPods is now, do we need them? Do you know what I mean? We're, we're living in that era now where we have invented most of the stuff that we need <laughs> and now we're just messing about they said that in 1900 someone actually said everything that's to be invented has already been invented they what? said that in 1900 and how wrong were they no but what what came out what, at what point what was invented in that year where they went right that's it now well, what, what did they invent in 1900 that that made them go we've we've done it all now well just think think a little bit right the 20th century think what happened in the 20th century Go on. Well, cars, planes. Yeah, but is that a good thing? Planes and that. Do you need to? Do you need a plane really? Wouldn't it have been better if we all stuck where we should be instead of travelling about? War. Why? War. Well, look, wars. Wars happening, isn't it? Because everyone's saying, "Well, now we can fly. We'll go over there." And so I'm, there were no that. wars prior to the invention of the aeroplane. Not like. Not like there is today. Right. But what I'm saying is. The more the the world's got smaller on it, everyone's saying that, right? Yeah. Uh, you know the way I was saying to you the other day, uh, you know, we, we now go to places where we shouldn't go. People go on holiday to places where you've got to have an injection before you go there. Yeah, forget it then. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that's a warning. Don't well, go there. I'm with you on that. I, I I don't want to enter a country where I have to have an injection to stop me from dying while I'm in that country. Right, I totally agree with you on that. So what yeah. happened is, so they invented the plane, and it's like, oh, let's go on holiday, and then they go oh, they die now. Oh well, you've got to invent something. Let's invent an injection, and then it's like, right, well, what what else do we need to go to that place? It's a lot of faffing. <laughs> 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 so what I'm saying is, I'm, is that I'm, a place? A lot of faffing. What what I'm saying is, you know, Steve's travelled more than I have. You've been to like dangerous places. I've been to places where you need injections. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but why? Because it's fascinating, isn't it? You know, don't you not believe in that idea of uh, travel broadens the mind? You know, well, it makes you experience other ways of life, other ways of thinking. It just enriches you as a human being. That's the whole reason people go travelling. But since the invention of the telly, you don't have to go that far to You're see it. You're absolutely right. So uh, there you go then. The telly was the twentieth century, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. So where Some would you? Where would you stop then? You'd stop making stuff now. Stop inventing stuff right now. Or do you well, think we could carry on for another five years, see what comes up, and then just draw a line under it all? Well, but, again, uh, we, we're just messing about, and but I... But there's still things to do, isn't there? I mean, I, I know, I could throw things up, you can always get an answer about it, but, you know, a cure for cancer, a cure for AIDS. Yeah, but d should we, should we mess with that? What do you mean? Because there's too, there's too many people in the world as it is, isn't there? So, that's a way of controlling it, so that, you know, like, look at London, right? It's overpopulated, 
rent keeps going up because there's more and more people surviving, right? <laughs> if you let them die, it's going to even itself out. See, I was saying to someone the other day about maybe we should look at, if we're going to invent something, right, forget, like, the traditional way of people having kids, right? The way they, you know, have it away in that. You know, <laughs> what, do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? No, you know, like, the, the way that, you know, we, we have kids and stuff. If it'd be good if what happened was to, to control it is if man and woman, right, they sort of, they're born and that, they enjoy their life, they learn a lot, they live to be about 78, I think, by that point. <laughs> so specific. Yeah, 78, no, 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 yeah. but seven, by 78, I reckon you've sort of got to that point where you go, do you know what, I've done everything I'm gonna do. If you haven't bungee jumped by the time you're 78, you're not gonna do it. No. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like... Your hips have come off. You've, you've done it all now, so I've had, I've had my innings. Yeah. And then you die, right? So, say if everyone had that, they live to be 78. Mm. But then, just as you die... They give you the bumps. You get... <laughs> y you have a little baby inside you, and as you die, your life carries on. Sorry, How is this you, happening? Sorry, are you mental? No, no, but don't you think... I mean, what? I've never heard such dribble. You say you're saying that, but if, if, if Newton said it, you'd go, hmm, interesting. <laughs> That's, that's what annoys me. The point is, Carl, he never would. No, He'd what? never say it, that's the point. But I, if you I never say it, if you never I say it... I don't understand what you're talking about there. What, <laughs> how, how, how was it, how is there a little baby in a 78-year-old? No, what I'm saying is, it's like an apple, where <laughs> the apple grows, and it's got its little baby pips in it, and, and the apple goes, and the seeds are planted, and a new one's born. But what that's I, what happens. But that is what reproduction is. Yeah, but I'm saying, babies aren't being born left, right, and centre. It's, it's, it's controlled so that as someone dies, someone's born. But Carl, stop. Wh whose responsibility is Look, this? if you don't want to do but it, we won't do it, but is I'm it just... Is supposed to be nature? Has nature got to, to develop <laughs> humans so that we act that way, we, we live that <laughs> way, or is like, this a scientific experiment? I like, he said, he said to you then, he said, Look, if you don't want to do it, we don't need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you were up for it, <laughs> yeah. we'll sort it out. <laughs> yeah. We can do that. We'll have a whit round. So no, we can do the research. I, I just think, at the end of the day, we've got to do something. And is anyone keeping an eye on this and, and looking at what we can do next to control the population thing? It does my head in that I've got to live in London for work and what have you. <laughs> and there's loads of people here. And, you know, forget going out on a Saturday night, it's too busy. And you can't move and they keep... I mean, what annoys me about London So is your solution is that 78-year-old women have little babies inside them. And, and as they slip away into death, the yeah. little babies... And how is that baby then Who raised? Looks Who looks baby? after the baby? Cause it's a pretty good system, having a baby <laughs> while you're young enough to look after that baby and make sure it lives <laughs> yeah. to, uh, you know, reproductive age itself. I mean, that one, that's, that system's been working for years. Nature's sort of sorted it out. <laughs> Natural selection and evolution sort of makes that a, a good model. But wait a minute, Nature, pop that on hold, cause Carl Pilkington's got an idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, it was just, it was, that's what it was, just an idea. Yeah, well it was, you know, it was nonsense. <laughs> but thank it you for it. The worst <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was the ramblings of, it was the ramblings of someone you'd find by themselves in a hospital eating flies. Yeah, this is the sort of thing you find when uh, if they find uh, maybe a, a pamphlet or a, a booklet written by a psychopath. <laughs> you know, someone just <laughs> yes. before they went on a rampage and then turned the gun on themselves, they yeah. go through their possessions and they find a book I've and it's got weird drawings, women with knives in their face, yeah. and this kind of gossip. In fact, I saw uh, I saw a similar sort of theory written out on a wall, but it was written in shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, all I'm all I'm saying is I think it's you know when people die normally. Everyone's fed up about it, aren't they, and a bit down. But <laughs> if when you if if when you pass away, you go, oh, we're gonna miss Gladys or whatever. But then there's this new life brought in. It's almost like a bad news. But, but news. you're talking about it like someone could pick this idea up and run with it. Like you've given them enough information <laughs> yeah. to do it. How is this possible? Where does she get the baby from? How, 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 why, why does it grow? Why grow it in, a, a, in Gladys's belly? Why not have it in a drawer? <laughs> what I'm I'm saying ready to go, just add water. I, right. I mean, uh, who looks there, after son of Gladys? Look, there look. is no theory here. There's no, th it's the ramblings of a, a madman. What I'm saying is though, the body's always changing, isn't it? From caveman to now or whatever. In some changing. cases. And they're always finding out more and more. Like I read the other day yeah. about how um, they're saying, do you know how like they say people have six senses? Yeah. There's loads more than that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's this one. I say, like, show me that you've got one. No, right, and, and there's this one that's knocking about. Go on. That, uh, what it is, say if I'm, say if I'm in a, in a pub, right, mm. and I'm, I'm just doing a crossword or whatever, 
Unlikely, but go on. And, uh, there's some woman who's walked in, right, and she's staring at me. Yeah. I know she's looking at me and I look up and I look round she's looking at me. Right. And they're saying that's a new sense that, that, they, that they found out from, like, you know, doing tests and what have you. Yeah, it's rubbish. And they're um, saying okay. that's been around well, it, since, but, since, like, man and dinosaur was knocking about. But it could be, it could be, you know, peripheral vision. It could be a footstep stopped and usually when someone's footstep stopped, they're, 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 they've stopped. No, they've explained you, I, I think it. it's safe to assume that, you know, that with your perfectly round head, people are always stopping and no, looking. No, but they explained I mean, that it. you just know that there's probably gonna be someone there if they, you look right. They said it's from the time when, like, caveman was, like, wandering about and he'd go, hang on a minute. And he'd look round, there's a dinosaur there or whatever, and he'd, right, he'd leg it. Right, this is, this is nonsense. One, it's one, not... I hate it when people use the term when caveman was wandering <laughs> round. Caveman and dinosaurs, oh, they used to live together, yeah. Oh, that's the same era. Yeah. What have you been watching? Raquel Welsh. What do you mean? Well, what do you mean caveman wandering, knocking around with a dinosaur? You know the Flintstones is only partly based on fact. <laughs> <laughs> dinosaurs and man did not coexist. The dinosaurs had long gone before man arrived. Extinct. Kaput. Hmm. You don't, what, you don't believe us? What, you don't believe because you, because you've seen- Because you saw that film where they took pictures of lizards and magnified them and put them next to men in films so they looked like they were fighting. Yeah. No, but why, why couldn't that have happened? What is the film with Raquel Welsh? Um, a Million Years B.C. Yeah, a Million Years B.C. or something. A yeah. Million Years B.C. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but- She had a sort of woolly mammoth bikini. Fact. But why, why wasn't the dinosaurs back then just like how we have dogs now, in a way? He's watching the Flintstones. He's watching the Flintstones. He's thinking of the Flintstones. Yeah. That's what he's when thinking. When he puts out the saber-toothed tiger. Yeah, and then yeah. And he, and he, and he mixes in. his concrete in a pelican. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I, ju I just think that they c there must have been a crossover point. Why? Why did you say that? Why do you think there must have been there a crossover There must have been. Because if nothing was knocking about at any point, how did anything carry on? I know. I know exactly. Why, why, why didn't Hitler meet Nero? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? There must have been a crossover. They must have met somewhere. <laughs> they must have met at a party somewhere. <laughs> they mixed in similar circles. Yeah. Well, I mean, are you are you telling me that Ken Dodd has never met Genghis Khan? <laughs> they must have bumped into. S I can't believe it. Yeah, forget it. <laughs> oh, you're listening to Ricky Gervais with Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Coming up after the ads, Monkey News. What ads? <laughs> no ads, no? <laughs> no, we're not, there's nothing here, there's no records. Of, we just gotta keep on talking. Okay. Which is not. We could do our own ads. <laughs> okay. Bring tea for the tiller man, steak for the sun. Out now to own on DVD, Ricky Gervais's and Steve Merchant's award-winning extras. With Ross Kemp. Oh, zippy. With Les Dennis. Put your ass away, Les. I don't really know! And Kate Winslet. Oh, this nun outfit makes me talk dirty! Out now on DVD. Extras. Did you like Flannel Wars? <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais book for kids with pictures of made up creatures in of different colours? Well, <laughs> if you did, there's, <laughs> there's more of them now in the more new book. More Wars. <laughs> which is also by Ricky Gervais, drawings by his mate. Out now. The Ricky Gervais Show, on Guardian Unlimited. You're listening to Ricky Gervais with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, now time for one of our regular features. Monkey News. Do the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news! Right, what, what we're doing here is, right, is, uh, just giving you a bit of, bit of monkey news that's, that's gone on, right, where <laughs> a monkey's been involved in it. Good little story in that. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with the one that went into space? The first, uh, the first sort of thing they ever sent up there before man did it and all that. You see, this is what annoys me with it really. Armstrong gets all the, all the glory, but do you know who went up there before, before him? A monkey. Yeah. Yeah. Dog but, went up first. But what was the monkey called? I don't know. No, sure. Okay. So it's not the most informed news bulletin. The dog was called Laika. Was it? Yeah. They couldn't get it back there. They sent it up there. Did a few tests and stuff, and they couldn't get it back. They weren't they weren't prepared to bring the capsule back yet. Brilliant. We could all do that. So is that a, is that a you know is that a good mission? Well, I just think it was seeing what if it if if the mission itself killed it, but they didn't have the technology because of course it couldn't it couldn't fly the capsule back, which it has to be manned to bring right, it. Well, this this was this was the next one up then, right? So the dog must have gone first, and then they went right. We made an error there, right? Get the monkey in. And what happened is they taught it, um, what buttons to hit at the time that it needed to hit them and 
and the way they did this was like give it bananas it was like hit the red button and it hit the red button they'd give it a banana right. and they go right reverse is the green one hit the green one and then they do that and go there's a banana and then they go right hit reverse and it go pff, and get a banana right. hit the red so it was taking commands on like headphones Right, but how were they giving it the banana? Is that how you learn to do radio? <laughs> how were they giving it the banana? What do you mean? No, well, this is before it went. You, do, you oh wouldn't right. just go and put a monkey in it and go, there you go, get on with it. They'd sort of put him in one of them capsules that you get. Yeah. And they were uh, on headphones. I, I don't believe this happened. Well, I'm telling you the story now, so the monkey. I don't sat think they trained it to do anything. I think they sent it up there and he put electrodes coming out of it to no, see what-, what it uh, wasn't any of that. They did a thing like they do. Like, right. Like they can with animals. If you give something, uh, you know, like a treat, you can teach it how to do it. It's just like a dog, isn't it? When it's called Pavlovian conditioning. However, that was to see if it would salivate or go over to yeah, a particular well, corner, yeah. not if it could control a spacecraft. <laughs> next one up. So next one up. It, as far as the, the monkey's not sat there going, oh, I'm a bit under pressure here, it's a rocket. All that's knowing is, I'm getting a banana if he hit that button. That's all the monkey's thinking about. Right? <laughs> they wouldn't, but billions well, of space but dollars. But how can they be sure that it's going to press the button at the right moment? Because it's got headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> They're telling it. It's not like just, you have now. It's not like willy nilly. It's not just like pop it in there and see who's that. What's to stop it from just hitting it any old time? Because it's a monkey and it's, it's not a human. Because it's trained now. Oh, anyway, it's trained. So it's listen, fully trained. Yeah. Go so on. what happened is anyway. Oh, this is absolute rubbish. They pop the monkey in there. Yeah. It's got its headphones on. They're going mm. right. Hit the green one, and uh, I think there's something there that a little banana comes out to keep the same. <laughs> no, you're making this up. I'm not. It's the same. There's no way that they made uh, a, right, a so, spacecraft so can, that had know. a banana dispenser. <laughs> right, there's so. no way in this world that they made a spacecraft that could go into outer mm. space, right? So what? So man you're, so by you're, a monkey mm. with a banana dispenser. So you're saying that it's easy to send something up to space, but you don't believe there's a little banana machine. Right, okay, so in your world, in your world, uh, there's this, there's a monkey and it's been conditioned and there's so a little monkey dispenser, a mon uh, banana. Sorry, monkey dispenser or a yeah, banana, banana dispenser? banana dispenser, yeah. right. So it comes to the launch day, monkeys, monkeys sat in there, uh, everyone's ready, bananas are stocked up and all the rest of it. They go, right, hit the green button. <laughs> Right, and the rocket goes off and what have you. No, they would not make the monkey launch the rocket. Carl, so, you are you are living in a, so, a cartoon world. So the rocket goes off, right? <laughs> this is absolute bollocks! It's all going well. You are, you, I mean, I don't know it's what all, you're gonna... It's, it's not going well. Going There's well. no way a monkey launched it's a going. rocket. There is no way a monkey launched a rocket, so you idiot. it's all going on, so they're going, hit the left button and, it's, and it goes... The left, left button? Right, oh, so. well-known spacecraft command. <laughs> this is Houston, hit the left button. <laughs> oh, brilliant. This is what happened in Bio 13. Hit the left button. So it, yeah. it, oh, it yeah. goes left. Yeah, it goes left. So it goes left and it's, it's going away. Left! It's, it goes oh, no. left! Yeah. <laughs> no, the moon! So You're going goes, right! It goes, it goes for the moon, everything, everything's going well. Right. Uh, they get up there, it does whatever it does. It reverse, it comes back. <laughs> <laughs> right? So then- You are, so, honestly, you are brain dead. So it's- You long, are one of the most stupid people- That I would rather have mm -hmm. the monkey drive right, listen, me home than you. So the thing is, so it lands back, yeah. it does a good job and everything, it gets out. Um, and this it's is this is, bananas. this is where this is where it turns a bit sad because after it done that mission, yeah. right? Because <laughs> it happened and it, and it was all safe and everything. The next one would have been to send man, right? So the monkey enjoyed it and it was like, well, I want to do it again, right? But they were like, so how did they know that? How did they know? Just, what just the way it looked and what have you. It was <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck off! <laughs> just the way it looked. So, you, are, you are a maniac. So the thing is, though, right? So after it had done that, it was on such a high, right? <laughs> yeah. It could it could never get that high again. Change there was drugs. nothing. There was nothing that it could do. Went on tour, did it? It did. It, it, it sort of ended up killing itself <laughs> because it could never never get that buzz that it right, got. Right. That was absolute bollocks. None of that is true. <laughs> except they sent a monkey into space, and I and I will mm. check that absolute drivel. So it, in your mind it committed suicide. It, had a, it went on a crazy bender of drinking drugs and women and well, like then- it, do, it does happen, you know about it. was it. found you in a motel room. <laughs> <laughs> right, do you know like you don't believe in like scary stuff? Just like- you know, ghosts. No, I believe in scary stuff. I don't believe no, in well, things that are totally logical. Yeah, ghosts. Vampires? No. Anything made up by man. 
Well, there was, so, there was something in the paper the other day about a vampire. How they found one, they dug something up. It was in the paper. And, oh, um, it's true then. It's definitely true. But it's we'll leave that. Then. But we'll leave that because you're just going to do that, so it doesn't matter. No, come on. Let's come on. Quickly, on. tell us about you found. No, it's just that they found they found a body in a coffin yeah. with a, a bit weird. of wood through its heart and a knife in its mouth. But <laughs> if you don't believe it, <laughs> it was then a vampire what's the point? pirate. That's it was the... a vampire pirate. But that's definitely proof of a vampire, then, and of course, and not some grotesque murder. Yeah. That's definitely proof of if a vampire. If it was found, if it was found, if it wasn't, one, if it wasn't right, made hang up. Hang on a minute, yeah. hang Two, on a minute. As far as I'm aware, they, re when you put the, the thing through their heart, they just turn into dust. As, and and also, all, the, all their victims get, get their own life back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's right, the and here was the second bit. Yeah. Somebody had dug it up, yeah. got the heart, blended it, burnt it, pop it, popped it in some water, mm. drank it, and they're in prison now. Now, if it wasn't dodgy stuff, why are they in prison? Well, they're in prison because they're mental, because they dug up a body, liquidised its heart, <laughs> burnt it and drank it. <laughs> that's, that's why, why they're, they're in prison. <laughs> <laughs> There's right. your answer. Right. But anyway, that isn't what I'm talking about, right? But Go I on. met, I met, uh, Derek Akora the other week. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, and who's he? Which one's he? He's, uh, is he, is he a medium? He can contact the dead, is that right? He just chats to him and that, sure. passes messages on. Nice of him. So I said, oh, tell us something a bit weird and that. So mm. he said, what do you want to know? I said, just, just something weird. So he goes, all right then. He said, uh, here's one for you, right? And he said, uh, there's this pub out in the country. And, uh, he said, there's this mug. Do you know those old mugs that they have? Where they used to, they used to, like, leave their own cup knocking like down. Like a tankard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tankard thing. Yeah. So, uh, so there was, there was one of them mugs in there, right? And everybody- Tankard, like, let's use a tankard if we've right, established that. Tankard, word. yeah. Because yeah. you're the only mug in this story. Right. He's nice. believing so, it all. High five. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So All this right. tankard's knocking about, right? And everyone who's running the pub keeps going, oh, I wish they'd stop leaving this tankard about, right? Mm. And they pick it up. <laughs> it must be a pain. <laughs> Having a, a tiny, small tankard in a pub. That must be a real grind. <laughs> so, so every time they sort of picked it up and went, we'll have to wash that, and they popped it on a different mm. sideboard. Next thing you know, that person who's touched it died, right? Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> They must have been getting through bar staff. So they got, so they kept getting a new staff and that, and they went, oh, what's the connection here? Right? <laughs> What's the connection here? Oh God! So anyway, so call Australia. We've run out. So they, so they, they sort of someone <laughs> notices and they go, you know, it's a bit weird. It's it's that cup, right? So they get tankard. A, they, they get, so it's that it's that tankard and that. So um, they get a vicar in. Of course they do. And they go, look, um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. This 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 tankard. Every time someone touches it, they die. So he said, leave it with me. He gets his um, special water out and what have you. He comes round, does a little prayer, sprinkles it. He goes, right, not a problem, don't worry about it. He picks it up, chucks it in the bin. Guess what? <laughs> what? Dies in a crash on the way home. Because he'd picked it up. Well, but, 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 Carl, you're telling me this like it's fact. And I meant to go, that's amazing. Don't Cora, he told me. <laughs> it's Carl, I have, I have, I have, I have no opinion of that story. Other than, I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no connection between touching the tankard and him dying. That's all I'm sure it's of. It's not just him, though, is it? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to even um, uh, contest the, the chain of events. All I'm saying is there is no connection. There is no connection possible because I believe in logic and the laws of the universe. So, you, you, when, you're, you, when you're telling me um, miracles and strange things, outside coincidence, you may as well be telling me about the Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny, because they're equal to me, that it's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. So what, what would it take, though, for you to go, oh, I, I, I'm actually a believer now? But, but what you're saying is you're, you're I can't answer that question, because I'd have to base, um, my beliefs on some of your premises, which I can't do. Uh, it's like it's like you saying, but what if you found out that two and two equaled five? I, I, I can't. It's a necessary truth that it doesn't. I'd have to I'd have to go back and fundamentally uh, uh, disagree with what I think twoism is, twoness and fiveness. And you, it, you've never been in a situation though where you've gone, this room feels a bit weird. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Could be something knocking about or. But th but that's 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 a different question. I I, I could go into a really rough looking pub and think this this isn't good because it's 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 no, based like on a, induction then. Because I mean I mean like you know if you've been to Cornwall on holiday and stayed somewhere and you've gone, do you know what? I'm sure, so much died in here. I'm sure so much died everywhere. Yeah, but what I mean, you never pick up a vibe of like I I I've got a mate right who uh is is living in this big stately home, right? And what it why is, is he living there? He's, 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 he's paying hundred pounds a month, right, 
and it's almost like he's being a security man. Oh, right. But he's not, he's not, he, he doesn't set out the door with that on and everything. He just goes about his life, but he bases most of his work in this stately home. So right? what is it, like a, a- Like a, a housekeeper, like, like he's a sort a of house-sitting. A, a little bit, yeah, I mean it's mass- it's- it's- it's bigger than Buckingham Palace, this place, right? So what is it, a billionaire that's gone away or something? I, th I think it's some sort of, uh, I think he said something about a, a Viscount or something, right? right? He said it's- he owns this place, he is living in America, this place he owns but it's falling to bits. Wow. And he's worried that people are gonna go in there and squat and what have you. So he said to me, mate, you know, there was an advert, advert in the paper, he doesn't know him, advert in the paper saying, do you want to live in a big house, hundred quid or whatever? And uh, he, he went and had a look, right? And, and he's living in there now, he pays hundred pound a month. There's about eighty rooms. Gee. And uh, it's this big stately house, might have you. And I went, I went down there. He said, "Oh, come down and have a look, right?" And from outside, you go, oh, "This is brilliant. It's like something out of, you know, like the Manor Born or something." You go, "This is this is impressive," but then when you get in, it's like it's a wreck. Uh, it's right? just falling apart because they can't afford. Well, it's just been left. No one's no one's doing any vacuuming up or anything. There's like rat poison everywhere. Um, like windows are smashed, doors kicked in. That's oh, a real that's shame. Mm. What, why is it? Is it? Is it I don't think he's doing his job, is he? Is it because it because it would cost like millions to do up? Or well, something? apparently it'd be like I, I think they're going to have it done up, but it's it's going to cost like eighty million, right? So anyway, so it's um, a big house. It's a big house. So we get we go to the pub and what have you. I've got like a little torch, and um, we we're wandering around looking in all these different rooms, right? And I'm asking him what's what why is what how's it got in this state? Do you know what I mean? If someone's had it, why 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 have they let it get to this state? And he was saying how, you know, it was like a, a mental home right. at one point. And um it was like a drug thing as well. People who had, had problems with drugs. They popped them out there because it's in the middle of nowhere, do you know what I mean? If you if you needed drugs or anything, forget it. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So so that's straight away. Do you know like have you ever been in a, a hospital when it's been shut down or a school when there's no kids in it and there's that sort of bad atmosphere? Of like weirdness, yeah, right. For so, the sake of argument, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so we're wandering about, and I say, "Oh yeah, what's in this room?" Right, and, and we go in, and all the floors are like a wreck and rotten and stuff. And I looked at the wall, and there was like a little piece of paper stuck on the wall, Ooh. right. And I said, "What's this here?" So I wandered over, right, got right up close to it, and somebody had wrote it. Uh, <laughs> 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 somebody had wrote it. Oh, some. <laughs> Somebody had wrote it. I love this. You can do it. Imagine doing Jack and Hori. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Right, go yeah, go on. So, sorry. So sorry there's, for it. there's a little sign there, right? And I go up to it and it says, flies, right? With an arrow, flies, like, flies this way. Yeah. Right? So I think that's, that's a bit weird. <laughs> so I follow the arrow, right? Which goes to this corner where there's a shelf, about 3,000 dead flies on it. Oh my God. Condom stuck on the top. <laughs> Right, that's, right. that's weird, isn't that it? That is weird. That is that weird, is weird. Right? So I'm looking at that, and there's, there's loads of stuff on the floor and that, bits of paper. Picked up this bit of paper, right? And it had, uh, like in biro and that, it looked really old, like it'd been there years. And it had, uh, uh something like, need nappies, dummy, right? Uh, blankets, blah, blah, all this, like, all stuff for, uh, like, and I turned it over, right, and it said, none of this now needed, baby dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> now that's weird, isn't it? Now that's what I'm talking about when you get a bad vibe, you go, that's, that's, who's been in here? <laughs> so, um, I, d I don't actually oh, understand God. what point you're trying to make, <sighs> Carl. Just because <sighs> it's, it, it, who's written that? Who's been in that room? Who's been in that state? <laughs> and then straight away your mind starts going, oh, I'm getting bad vibes in here. But Carl, didn't you just tell us that this was once occupied by drug addicts and mentals, to yeah. use your word? Yeah. So don't, haven't you put two and two together and thought that was probably who wrote it? That doesn't mean it's paranormal or ghostly. You walk into a building, it's a big, terrifying, empty house. It's terrifying in as much as it's cold and dark and draughty and a little bit spooky in this sort of illustrative sense. And insecure. Yeah, you're because a bit nervous because you- and you know, it's got this sort of- it's got- it's bad vibe, it's just based on the fact that- Your mate's in charge! <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying. <laughs>
I mean, yes, yeah, so it's like saying, are we scared of the dark? Yes, it's, I understand why people are scared of the dark. I'm a little bit scared of the dark. You're walking along. Because you, you don't know what's in it. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's in the darkness. That's why people get nervous. It doesn't mean you have to make the leap then that you've got some paranormal sense. Oh my God, I'm Carl Pilkington. And hang on, just like Derek Akora, I have sensed something strange and evil in this room. Wait a minute, there's some flies in a condom. <laughs> I was right all along. <laughs> that is weird. Flies in a Johnny <laughs> equals badness. <laughs> the, the, the flies in a condom was weird. It's now. weird. I don't know. But, it's but, but the note. The note. <laughs> Yeah. I just think of his face when he saw that, <laughs> reading it by torchlight. <laughs> you must have been terrified. It's a bit, it's a bit odd, isn't it? Thank you very much indeed for listening. If you'd like to get in touch with us, either myself or Ricky, or you've got something to send to Carl, then you can email us at podcast at rickygervais.com. I'd just like to, uh, say thank you to both The Guardian for sponsoring this and Positive Internet for hosting this uh, podcast. Both great. They, the guys at Positive Internet know exactly what they're doing. They're my kind of people, as is The Guardian. Cause, sorry, I just... Well, you, you weren't contractually obliged to say that, were you? It just sounded... No, it's, it's what I think. It's just what I think. Right. It's just I've not heard you mention either of them before in that way. It just sounded a little Oh, bit. you're joking. I, I both love The Guardian and Positive Internet. Great, guys. OK, that's, that's just the way you feel. It's not... Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to another podcast uh, of The Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant. Hello. All right. And, of course, Carl Pilkington. All right. Rick, you'll be pleased to know we've already had some responses. Uh, you remember last week I mentioned that you can email us on podcast at rickygervais.com if you've got anything for Carl or you or I. And uh, Simon and Mark have already emailed us in this link to something that was on the BBC News website. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's a remarkable story. Um, well, I'll just I'll give you the headline straight away and you can, you can draw your own conclusion. Lion mutilates 42 midgets in Cambodian ring fight. That's, that's a, just the headline. That's a hell of a headline. That I mean, makes me want to know more about yeah, the story. Well, that's, what headline, that's what a headline should do. But, I mean, I think we'd all read the news. We'd all take more interest in the news if, if they could open the, you know, BBC News. Six bong. Every night, bong. Lion mutilates 42 midgets in Cambodian ring fight. Bong. bong. We'd definitely pay more attention. Um... So this is the story, it's just extraordinary. Spectators cheered as entire Cambodian Midget Fighting League squared off against African Lion. Now, I didn't even know there was a Cambodian Midget Fighting League. You're an ignoramus. Everyone, of course, has heard of the CMFL, which is genuinely what it's known as in Brilliant. Cambodia. Now, like you, I don't know who the Cambodian Midget Fighting League are normally fighting. I don't know what tournaments. I assume it's each other. Well, I is assume it, each other. It's midget fighting then. Yeah. Well, let me just give you more information, and then we'll, we can dissect it afterwards. Tickets had been sold out three weeks before the much anticipated fight. The fight was organised when an angry fan contested Yang Shimoni, president of the CMFL, claiming that one line could defeat his entire league of forty-two fighters. So this bloke is going to the president and going, "I reckon a lion could get all your." Midgets. I reckon he could. Yeah, he could destroy all of your forty-two midget fighters. Uh, now, apparently, Shimoni, the president of the CMFL, he takes great pride in the league, and uh, he's conveyed in a recent advertising campaign that his uh, midgets will take on anything, man, beast, or machine. Now, I don't know what kind of machine, again, midgets are fighting. But don't um, the midgets have a say in A this? washing machine. I don't but the midgets going, all right, keep it down. <laughs> no, they <laughs> like, won't fight anything. Well, we won't fight anything. This, <laughs> we're, we're fighting each other. We're, yeah. we're sort of, like, equally matched. <laughs> no, yeah. you'll fight a beast or no, a no, machine. No, 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 we're, I'll fight another midget. I will fight any midget. Is what, when I said I'll take on anything, I meant another midget. <laughs> Machines. So this bloke goes, I reckon the lion could take on your midgets. He goes, rubbish. Yes. Uh, and that is why an African lion was shipped in especially for the event, which took place uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, in the city's Colosseum. I mean, they've already got, they've got a Colosseum, Rick, which is already brilliant. So, hold on, this is sanctioned by the, the city? Well, the Cambodian government allowed the fight to take place under the condition that they receive a 50% commission on each ticket sold, and that no cameras would be allowed in the arena. <laughs> we'll take 50%, but, you know, for, for, for dignity's sake, <laughs> there's no cameras. <laughs> You know, we don't want to make this amazing. into a, we don't want to make this into a, you know, into a, a spectacle. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's just, it's just lion versus midget, but, <laughs> exactly. you know. Well, 42. Never forget, there was 42 midgets. Uh, now this is, this is the tragedy element, and this is why we shouldn't be laughing, because the fight was ended. Don't tell me the lion gets hurt. Well, the fight was ended, Rick, after only 12 minutes, after which 28 of the midget fighters were declared dead. Right. While the other 14 suffered severe injuries, including broken bones, lost limbs, and they were basically but unable the, to fight. But the anymore. lion wasn't hurt. It would have seemed that the lion was okay. Oh, good. Because the lion had no choice in this. No. 
See, that's the, the, uh, uh, I love it when a human takes on a beast and comes unstuck. Because that lion was scared and defending itself. Those little midgets were loving it. They wanted to go What do you there. mean they were loving it? You don't know that. Well, why would they do it? Well, what I find out- well, I worried, you see, I don't know the internet of this. I wonder if they were fighting against their will. I got the horrible feeling, because uh, with all due respect to any midgets listening, they must be fairly easy to round up. <laughs> you could probably corral some midgets fairly easily. You know, you should need some regular full-size people, and it'd be easy to grab some midgets and take no. them away, whisk them away, put them in a cage. No, because- no, 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 because they don't, because a lot of them stand on each other's so shoulders and wear a long coat. Sure, but- And a hat, and you go, oh, that's not a midget. No, Let but him go. They, well, those ones are getting away with it. They're yeah. fine. They're wandering around. For, you you know, fine. Because who's r voluntarily going to join the Cambodian Midget Fighting League? But midgets who want a bit of action, who want to fight other midgets, they're allowed, they want to fight. They can't get in real boxing matches because the fellas are too big for them. But they can go, well, I'll tell you what, let's have our own little fighting league, right? But if I was on the Cambodian Midget Fighting League, I'd be livid. I'd be thinking to myself, well, I can't believe I listened to my agent and he's put me up fighting a lion. I mean, I should have just taken Panto in, in Grimsby. I can't believe that I I've can't done. believe it. But hold on, though. I thought I. Is. Uh, are they all really midgets, or are they lumping in dwarves with them? It, it's not specified, Rick, but, um... But I, that annoys me when people say, oh, look at these midgets, and I go, hold on, no, they're making up the numbers with a couple of dwarves there. <laughs> that's clearly only 39 midgets and three dwarves. <laughs> sure. Well, that's amazing. Carl, what are your thoughts instantly? I mean, you're going to have a, a take on that. I, whose side am I meant to be on there? What? Well, by well, the I'd story, be on, I'd be on the lion side. Uh, if I, I... I'd never go to a bullfight, but I love it when I see a matador gored to death. Because, again, yeah. the bull doesn't want to get in that ring and fight a bloke with swords, okay? So I love it. I think it's disgusting. And when someone says, um, a midget versus lion, I'm thinking, well, it's okay if the lion wins, to be honest, because they yeah. haven't got a choice. So, uh, and I hate it when people go, oh, I went to a bull fight when I was in Spain, but it's the tradition, isn't it? Ah, oh, well, there's loads of traditions that we don't adhere to anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm, gl I, I, you know, it, I say it shouldn't have happened, of course, but if it happens, I'm glad the lion isn't hurt. See, what's annoying me is I've sent money to Cambodia because apparently they're hungry and haven't got any energy. <laughs> so what's going on? Well, it's it's much easier to, to to fill up a midget than it is a regular Cambodian. You know, they mm, they they're, they're I just happy feel on, like on a Mars I'm, I'm being cheated a bit. You were conned before with a charity, weren't you? Well, a few times, yeah. Well, what about the the old lady? What was that? I got stopped, and it's like uh, they they sort of drag you in by saying, "Have you got a gran?" And I said, "No, they died and that." It's like, "Oh, did they die of the cold?" No, she, you know, ill. What have you? Just just old age. <laughs> he said, "Well, what happens with a lot of people's grands is they die in the cold, right?" So I was like, oh, that's bad, isn't it? Anyway, so she's chatting and she's showing me pictures of these old women who look cold, right? Saying, look at her, that's Edna. You know, she's got no family, she, she can't pay the bills and all that. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, yeah. Anyway, it goes on for about 15 minutes and you, you feel bad. You give them your bank details, right? And what happens is every couple of months you get a letter from Edna. Well, it's, right. it's not from her, it's typed up and what have you. But, but there's a picture of Edna, right? And it's saying, Oh, this December, you know, Edna's going to be extra cold. It's cold outside, she can't afford to pay the heat and what have you. Yeah. Keep going, right? So you keep paying every month, like, five pounds or whatever. Get another letter, a few months later, right? Edna's sat there, she's got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean she's got a tan? Well, when they said, you know, she's cold, I thought they meant for the heating, not to send her on holiday for a month. <laughs> she sat there with a the tan, I'm not joking. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't just a sort of a slight problem in the printing? No, no, definitely. Sure she, it wasn't she looked well happy. Sure it wasn't liver failure? This is a terrible thing to say, but when I see those people approaching now th with the clipboards on the street, yeah. I always get my mobile phone out and pretend yeah, I have a conversation. I've done that one. The number of fake conversations I've had walking past them now. Well, I felt sorry for them, right, because I thought, uh, that, you know, to be fair, I, I, I've got about ten standing orders where yeah. I felt sorry for them on court, right, I thought, they're doing a good deed, the least yeah. I can do. I find out they're on about eight quid an hour. Are yeah. they? Yeah. They're not just doing it out of the kindness of their hearts. Well, I don't want to lie I thought they were volunteers. I thought that was at least why I should feel guilty. If no. they're getting paid to do it. I don't know, that could be wrong. I think they do. What? I've heard they get, they get paid and that. Well, if someone knows, maybe, uh, email, email us. Email podcast at rickygervais.com is how you can get in touch with us. Cause Cause if, if you it, know if these guys are getting, uh, are fleecing us twice. Uh, you know, I, I, I heard something. Carl thinks they are. You, you think they're not. I don't know anything, but, I, no, but anything that will allow me. But to let's not find out because uh, you know I don't want to. I don't want to slag them off because they're obviously doing a good thing. So we find this out. It's, uh, you know, this is an educational show. I tell you what, though, right? Because we've we've talked about homeless people before and that. And I walked past one the other day. He's always cheerful, right? But don't you think, right? If you had a company, it's worth taking them on because they never have a lie in. Brilliant. 
I'm finding it quite exhausting now because a lot of the homeless I've encountered recently, they don't even now, they're not even after my money. They're just, they're just looking for conversation. While I was walking along the other day, and I don't know what you're supposed to say to this, mm. we were both walking, happened to be both passing a Chinese restaurant, he glanced in, he looked, he looked back around to me, he went, woman in there with three phones, three mobile phones, why does she need three mobile phones? Mm. Got nothing to say to that, got no opinion. Got absolutely no opinion of it. And I was thinking, what's going to have, you know, and you know that thing when you sort of, suddenly you got across the road conveniently to just get out of it, but, and there's another mad woman who started going, she, she was walking past me, she went, do you want to come to my church? I went, no, I, I don't believe in God. She went, do you believe in God? Oh, 20 minutes. Conversation, 20 minutes. It was unbelievable. I got to a point where I was so angry with her, I was shouting out from across the other side of the room. I was the one who sounded like a nutter, <laughs> going, there isn't a God! And, but, you see, when, when does it become, like, bad to avoid people like that? Do you know what I mean? Because some people say you shouldn't, you know, they're, they're people, they're people like us, they've just had a bit of bad luck. Well, of course they are. Yeah, I know, but I remember one on, on our estate, right, and she was a bit, what's what's the word that you can use, because I don't want to offend anyone. But who, I'd, I'd say, me, men, yeah, but sort of mental homeless. Is that a term? <laughs> that's the official term. That's, I think that is the- that's That the, is the that's, new that's, official yeah. term. It's- it's mental homeless-itis. Right, so <laughs> she, uh, she lived on the estate and what have you, and she aged- pretty. How was she homeless if she lived on the estate? Well, she sort of decided to stay around there, cos I think All people right. on the estate spoke to her more than people who had money. Do you know what but, I mean? Really? I was gonna say, why would they- why would she choose an estate to- not to live in, as opposed to a, like, a- a, a walled- Sort of lovely community. Yeah. What? What? Why well, not go to St John's Wood or? Yeah. yeah or I'd hang around in maybe say the maze in Hampton Court. <laughs> yeah, you know exactly. I mean? yeah. No one's no one's expecting to see a homeless person as they're trying to find their way around. Well, the, the, imagine the, the cash you'd make during the summer. The, the rich sort of Victorians used to keep sort of homeless in there as a little folly, and they used to pay them um, at the end if they stayed there for like three years. Uh, what, where, what do you mean? Were they paying? It was to fashionable what? to have a little like a little uh, homeless little hobbit in your in your <laughs> outhouse. Seriously. <laughs> And, and what did they have, did they have to do anything for the money? Run, dance, No, they just had to be tigers? there. No, they had, to, they had to be there when they brought around. They go, look, that's our, that's our little, um, cat weasel fella. <laughs> right. living, living in our folly. Yeah. And then they were, they got money, you know, at the end of it. It's just like really rich, sort of, Victorians and stuff. That's yeah. a great idea. They should definitely bring that back. Because, you see, I would give a lot more to shelter and, and those kind of charities if I could have a homeless guy oh, come they, and do my bidding. I could make him and dance. And they had a really long beard yeah. and rags. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, they could- I could just make them do dances for me or, you know- And he was somewhat magical, possibly. That yeah, would go, he wasn't riddle too me short. do, fiddle <laughs> me do, what is my name and yeah. who are you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. so this mental There's a little homeless. idea for shelter if anyone's listening. Yeah. Mental homeless woman on mm. the estate. Um, and what she used to do- Right, she she acted quite normal, and she used to always push push like a, a pram around with her. Right, everyone was like, she can't have a kid, can she? Right, and she was dead happy every day. She was up and down, walking up and down the road. Anyway, one day she got to walk past. Right, turned round and looked in the pram. There was a bucket with a face on it. <laughs> <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Rick, we've had an email here from a bloke. I think you're going to respect him because I think you can tell straight away from his name mm. that he's the kind of guy you'd want to hang out with. Go on. I know how much you love fun people. Yeah. Well, Paul, and he's calling himself this, Paul the Party Animal Parker. He's emailed in. He's given himself that that, that Let, moniker. Uh, right. I, I assume they're in sort of like quote marks. They're are in, they? in speech marks. Yeah. Paul Brilliant. Party Animal Parker. And he's calling himself that. Yeah. That I, I can't wait to- so I what do you, when you picture him, what are you thinking? Millhouse. <laughs> right, okay. I, I, I think he looks like Millhouse from The Simpsons. Yeah. I, 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 he's I, working I, in sort of an IT department, maybe? Yeah, for possibly. a large organisation? Oh, I think he might still be at school. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think. And, and this is the vital question. Do you believe him to be a party animal? I believe him to be a party animal is as much as a man with a long scarf that is mum knitted him <laughs> to look like- uh, Doctor Who can be a party animal, <laughs> yeah. yes. Do you think that when people are organising parties at his school, they're thinking the first person they got to get on the list and make sure he's guaranteed, uh, as You've a You've got guest, to take Paul the party, party animal. Paul Cause I, I, I bet he's got millions of affectations. I bet he's the, he wants to be known as the one that carries around a biscuit tin. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, he's, yeah, got, yeah. he's yeah. got the scarf. He's, he's the guy who, who only ever wears bowling shoes. <laughs> it's his thing. <laughs> it's his thing. <laughs> he's a little bit kooky, it's his thing. <laughs> uh, but so, thank you very much indeed for your contribution. And uh, it is fairly interesting what he sent in. He's found this on the web. Um, 
I don't know why he's felt an affinity with this with this particular inventor, but anyway, there's a man, a Serbian man, who um, has invented a sex machine for women, <laughs> and he's appealing to Western women to test his device. Mm. Um, he's from a town in, as I say, in uh, Serbia. I guess Serbia. I guess that's right. Is that right? Well, I don't know. What does it say? Well, it says a Serbian man, but is it called Serbia? Yeah. Yeah. What was all the Croatia Serbia thing? Well, it doesn't matter now, does it? Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter now. <laughs> <laughs> it does to them. <laughs> Otherwise, they fought for nothing. <laughs> what the hell do we know about world events? I mean, <laughs> how long did that go on for? <laughs> Months, wasn't it? If, if they're inventing new countries, they can't expect me to keep up with <laughs> current <laughs> trends, <laughs> can we? Anyway, this Serbian man has uh, has invented a sex machine for women, and he can't find any Serbian women to try it out, so he's looking now for Western women. Um, he's taken out a patent on the ultimate sex machine. Uh, it runs on a 390-volt electric engine, simulates sex, and has a 7.5-inch artificial penis. Uh, he said, my sex machine has an artificial penis that can make up to 180 moves in a minute. <laughs> now, I don't even know what that means. 180 moves? What? I mean, there's only really- well, In and out, I imagine. Out. It's largely yeah. the function. It, unless what, I've been doing it what wrong. He's, what he's done- What he's done- What he's done is he's- he's put a dildo on a Black & Decker. <laughs> A man can only manage the intensity of movement, uh, for about five seconds normally, but this machine can do it for as long as the woman wants. Um, but anyway, so he's looking for a woman who will test this out. But what I love, as soon as I read this, I was thinking, it's just imagining there going, oh, thanks for coming in, yeah, okay. So there's, uh, what's gonna happen is there's a penis that's gonna pop out from here, and it's gonna, it's gonna have sex with you. I'm gonna stand behind the machine. <laughs> I got to stand behind here. There's a lot of dials and stuff. I don't want to bore you with. Well, why do you have to stand behind it? Just I can't. It's technical stuff. But I got to be behind the machine. But there's no there's no penis on the robot at the moment. It's just no, a hole. That don't worry. <laughs> what happen is I'll switch the machine on. I'll go behind, and then a penis will appear. Will it be like a metal looking penis? It will be a robotic penis, but it will seem like it's a regular fleshy human penis. So you're gonna you, so all right. So you're gonna go behind this robot. Go behind the machine. Disappear. Yep. And then uh, a fleshy looking penis is that gonna- That will appear. Uh, through the hole. When I switch the machine on. Okay. Yeah. And that'll be, that'll be the real yeah. robot penis that But you won't see me for the duration of your sexual So you've, you've- 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 you've made this sort of like robot penis look really realistic. It's really realistic. You will not be able to tell the difference between, say, the robot one and mine, for instance. You okay. Well, you I don't want to see yours. No, no, no. There's absolutely not. Cause, cause, cause I'm not- I've not come around here to have sex with a person. I know. You've um, come around to test the machine. Yeah. And that is exactly what you're gonna get. Okay, well, Mechanical action. <laughs> but what I know is the idea that on the front, maybe they've, they, he's painted a picture of a robot's face. Yeah. And then when, when the machine begins, you know, rather like in a, one of those horror houses, like a kind of mansion in a spooky film, the eyes of the painting, they'll move. And, and the real, real, real eyes will appear, <laughs> just staring out. <laughs> But I, I don't think I can have sex with this machine unless you're actually in the room, just in case anything goes wrong. No. Don't worry, I'll be behind the machine, it'll be fine. It'll yeah. be safe, not a problem. Uh, okay. But uh, anyway, so yeah, Paul the Party Animal Parker sent that in, and um, and knowing him, there'll be plenty more coming uh, like that in future weeks. Carl, what do you think about that? The, uh, Machines the, and that. Yeah. Well, they've, they've always been sort of, I mean, to a lot of people, sex is important, isn't it? You know what I mean? Not to you. Well, it serves a purpose. <laughs> but, but what, <laughs> what purpose? No, Because no. you don't want to have kids, so what purpose? Just, you know. Something to do in the evening. Something to do, innit? When the telly's broke. But, but for years, like, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? Machines from, like, Roman times that- No. To that setup. No machines in Roman times. Like that, though. The old sort of, uh, knob on a stick machine thing. <laughs> <laughs> The old that, Roman knob on a stick. I'm sorry, but I watch Aqueduct. Time Team every week, and Tony uh, Robinson has never done uh, that. Uh, an old knob on a knob on a stick machine. I just think of Julius Caesar sitting down and go, "Okay, Aqueduct, we love that. Yeah. Thanks for that. Straight roads, good idea. We can see the enemy coming. Yeah. What have we got there? Well, I'm glad you've asked. Plumpticus. <laughs> what have we got there? Wan wa Wanklicus. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, what I've got here <laughs> is a yieldy knob. Um, and I've, I've put that on the end of a stick. <laughs> oh, a uh, stick as phallus. Okay, well done, Wanker. <laughs> yeah, no, no. yeah, well done. Yeah. You, um, are my new right-hand man, as they say. No, no, no excellent. Wrong. But they do, they do do stuff like that. You've been in, uh, the London Museum and that, and they've got sort of sex stuff from years ago. They've got, like, these metal pants that they used to wear. <laughs> that did not that is! Metal pants! <laughs> yeah, sort of Is metal. that a chastity belt, you mean? They used to make women wear them so that they could- yeah, No, but they had, they, had, they had them for blokes as well, though. Metal pants for blokes. Yeah, Why? So he had little lots. So if the if they, he was away, he couldn't he couldn't play away from home. And if he was away, she popped on a little. No, 
I just think they sort of like sexy metal pants. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what with sexy metal pants? Well, we'll have to look because I haven't got it in front of me. It's just something I remember seeing some sort of sexy metal pants that I used to wear. <laughs> but what are you saying, sexy metal Come pants? Because well, that was not British be... Museum. That was Soho. No, what, what I mean. <laughs> that was Old Compton Street. You were looking at the shop window. They always had to be ready for like battle and that, but these were a little bit sexy but protective at the same time. <laughs> That's all you remember from so the last museum. So Lancelot, are you ready to face the Black Knight? Yeah, <laughs> just, what do you think of these? Huh? What do you think of these? <laughs> well, I don't really care, just, you know. I but just want to look good on the battlefield. Well, they're know? both protective. Will there be women watching, cheering us on? Well, you're not going to fight like that, are you? What about all your, your chest? I'm going to wear nothing except these sexy metal pants. But you, what about your chest is exposed? No, I can, well, it's a good chest, I'll be working out. Yeah, I know, but what I mean is, you want to, you want, you want I've metal been, all I've over. actually been lifting up the round table <laughs> every week. I just work out, do that about four times a day. But that <laughs> machine, right? Why did it have to be a woman, or could they have got a little gay fella in? I, I Let don't me know. Just check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't actually specify the small print here. Yeah. I love that. Why do you want to see a little gay fella be? I don't know. I don't want to see it. I'm just saying they're sort of more. Why do, like, like, Carl, why do you want? I don't want to see why it. do you want I to want watch to a gay it. man get buggered by a robot? I wasn't the one typing in gay machines on the internet, finding <laughs> stuff out about. It's them. not Steve a gay was. machine. You just made it into a game machine. Yeah. He, he wanted to, he wanted to pleasure women with this machine. Oh. You're saying, can I oh. see a little gay fellow get a robotic cock up his arse? <laughs> You're the one requesting that, Carl no, Pilkington. I don't want that. I'm just saying that. You're the one that wants to see gay men with metal stuff up their arnus. No, oh, what I'm saying is they're more up for a bit more experimentation than- What are you saying? Why is that the case? Why? Why'd you say that? No, just, just, they, they just, you know. Butt plugs and that. I mean, <laughs> what I'm saying is- what, what, You can't just say butt plugs and that. It, I'm just it, saying that they- I reckon they'd be up for it. That's what do you know I'm about saying. butt plugs? I, well, I don't know anything about them. I, I just remember seeing an advert for some once in a sex shop. <laughs> what are you way. doing? What are you doing? No, I wasn't. I was just walking past. I was walking past the sex shop and that. Mm. And you know, you're sort of looking. Why, you why, why were you walking past a sex shop? Just because I was on the way to work and that, and I passed one, and there okay. was a little sort of one. It was open early, which I never understood. <laughs> right, it was about eight o'clock in the morning. Right, and I who's thought, rushing, who's, who's like rushing out? Yeah, morning, who needs yeah. them now? Right, yeah. but I, sort I of must get a, a bagel and some poppers on the way to work. <laughs> <laughs> But I walked past it and it had a, like a little post-it note or c postcard type thing and it was like popping now, buy an item, chucking some free butt plugs. <laughs> and I, I didn't know what they for, I didn't, I've, I'd never heard of them before. But all I'm saying is I've since found out what they do do with them. What and do they if do they with do them? that with them, yeah. then give them a go on that. <laughs> I had another email here, this is, I they haven't left, they haven't given their name actually, but they, they, it's an interesting fact, I'm hoping it's true. America's first nudist organisation apparently was founded in 1929 by three men. Now, what intrigued me when I read that is the fact that it's clearly three blokes just trying to meet some nude women. They're all 52 <laughs> balding. <laughs> exactly. With little, uh, uh, sort of those gold rimmed glasses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're just wandering around and it's all quite saggy down there and they're just knocking on doors saying, we're just set up an organisation. It's perfectly above board, completely yeah. legitimate. It's a, it's a nudist organisation. Um, you got any women in there that want to come and join us? Because we haven't got really. any female members at the moment. Got any women in there interested in, you know, volleyball no, or I trampoline? I can't, I can't be doing with it, me. You hate nudists, don't you? Nudists. I, d I don't understand what, what it's all about at the end of the day. And here's something, right? Do you know, like, when you're a bloke nudist, mm. right? Do you ever get any who just have like a small knob? <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand the question. What's that? What's your point? Well, you know, are there any blokes who are knocking about who just have a, a normal sized knob or maybe a bit smaller than they're normal? Um, <laughs> uh, who, who are happy wandering about <laughs> showing off what what they haven't got? If you know what I mean. I don't think nudists are just doing it because they're so proud of their knob. <laughs> no, but there's got to be a little bit of that in it, isn't there? Why? Say like, say like, um, you know, Jonathan Ross, right? He's, he's nipped to see you now and again and what have you. He's what? He, he sort of nipped in to see you now and again. He's always happy getting his knob out because he's known to have this big knob, right? What so do you he's, mean he's, he's known? Why, why is Jonathan Ross known to have this big knob? No, he just talks about it a lot, doesn't he? He's always saying about, oh, you know, but you'd like this, wouldn't you? But that. that's like me, say, me. I'm known for being a great lover. I say it a lot. It's clearly not the case. What yeah, evidence but, have you got that he's got a big no, knob? No, but the difference is he's, he's happy to keep getting it out. It's different, sort of, me walking about going, oh, I've got a big one and all that, and then, but no one ever sees it. 
but Jonathan sort of, he's, he's always getting it out, isn't he? Have you, have you seen him get it out before? I saw, well, he, he did get it out, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't looking. What I do just, you mean you weren't looking? How do you know it was out? Just because he sort of was moving it about and that, and I, I could sort of so see. You, no, I wasn't looking though, it was but, that, it was that sort of thing where you can see something but, moving about, but you're <laughs> like, I'm not looking at it. What, like an owl seeing yeah. a, seeing a, a mouse it's at just, like- what I mean, it doesn't matter, all I'm saying is- So no, no, no let's get back to this, you, you remembering vividly Jonathan Ross's penis. No. Uh, yes. what, I don't mean that. What but I mean, why were you looking at his penis? I wasn't looking though. Well, I'm it was clearly saying, not meant to be looked at. I'm just saying most blokes who, you know, nudists, mm. they must be pretty confident in themselves to, you know, getting it out. And I wasn't looking, it's just that, I mean, I, I looked once. Okay. What was it like? What, sorry, you looked at Jonathan's once? No, or? no, yeah. I was looking at another one. What? At so the same why, time? No, Why no. are you looking at loads no. of men's what's penises? Going on? No. Where are you going to this? It's natural, that's what I'm saying. What do you mean? This As is Carl, Carl takes a sneaky look at no, men's no. cocks dot no. com? No. What I'm saying is, <laughs> it's natural. Where, what's this happening? You're yeah, in a, so you're in a gym? No. A lot of guys are getting changed and no. you're just checking you're, out their you're, you're at your bedroom window with a pair of binoculars <laughs> no. and there was a little fella across the road getting I was, changed. I was at some night out once. Go right? on. So you were um, at heaven and you were in, in the toilet. It was some night out and, uh, some, some people come running on the stage, right, some music started coming on and these four people ran out, it was two women, So two you were at a gay strip club? It wasn't gay in that, it was just a normal night out, well, you know, some sort of party night out. Right. These, these people come running on, right, you got two women, you got two blokes. Right. They whip the knickers off, the fellas whip their undies off. <laughs> at the same now, time? Yeah, all at the same time. Was it like, like, a, like was it like a choreographed thing? Like, uh, what's it? Um. Chippendales. No, what, what, you know, like, Cheryl Baker was in it. It was that thing where they sort of, you know, on Eurovision Song Contest. I'm making your mind up. Yeah. When Buck oh, Spears Buck ripped Spears. off a, a larger uh, skirt, uh, um, conceding a smaller skirt. At no point did Buck Spears whip their knickers and pants when off. When you said Cheryl Baker was in it, I was thinking, what, she, didn't she used to host Record Breakers? <laughs> I, I don't remember that on so, there. So no. that, time on BBC One. So that, on. that happened, and all I'm saying is, right, before I had a look at the woman's bits, right, I just had a little cheeky glance at the fellas. Why? Why? Just checking it out, just seeing is everything normal down Why there. Why weren't your eyes drawn instantly to the ladies' bits? I, I, no, I, don't believe me, I had a look at that. All I'm saying is- But you went to the guys first? Just, just, <laughs> well, I didn't know how long pants were gonna be left off for. <laughs> So you didn't want to miss your opportunity, is what you're saying? Oh, you saw a window of opportunity <laughs> to see some men's bits and you thought, I better take it. No, no. Because this may never happen again. No. So what happened? So you, you, th there's, there's two women, two men, right? Um, I don't know what sort of event this is where you're looking at anyone get their knickers and pants off. I don't know why you're looking at all. Night, so eh? you go, you go, right, there's knickers and pants off, right. Let's check out the, 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 the knob and testicles first. You're telling me you've never, like, when you've been in a gym or anything, you've not just sort of turned your head, had a look and go, all right, yeah, that's all right, yeah. Been in a, sorry, let's just get this question right. Have we ever been in a gym and just taken a sneaky glance at a man's genitals? Is that your question to us? Right. For me, it's the same as when you see someone who's a bit odd, two heads or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be honest. If I was in a gym and a bloke came in with two heads, I'd look. I, well, I'd try- I'd get a sneaky glance in the mirror, I'd go- oh, Sorry, but you'd look at his genitals or his two heads? His two heads! Or would you sneak- you look at the heads and then think, I wonder if he's got two cocks and just- <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to have a look there. If, 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 I'll tell you what, and now I admit it, if I'm ever in a gym and a naked man with two heads walks in, mm. I probably will check out the genitals as well, just to make sure that he's got two of everything. Can I tell you the thing that always freaks me out? I do sometimes go to the gym and I live in North London, and the thing that always freaks me out is if there's a, a an elderly man, often quite short, mm. um, and I don't say, I say this only so you can picture something in your, in your, in your mind's eye, you know, because I live in North London, there's quite a lot of old elderly Jewish gentlemen, you oh. know, wander around. And, um, I'm always freaked out because there's at least two I'm aware of who've got very, very large penises. And I always find that really disturbing because I, sometimes you can't, you know, you can't help but notice because it's like Godzilla coming through the <laughs> changing room, do you know what I mean? And it's swinging there and it never seems <laughs> right that he's an old guy, you know, <laughs> he's kind of a little overweight, quite short and he's got a massive piece of action going on between his legs. And I always get, dare I say it, a little bit jealous because yeah. for a tall man, I, I feel I've been a little bit shortchanged. Oh, wow. So, so that I do admit, that's the only instance where my eye has been naturally drawn to it. Do you know what annoys me in gyms? where people walk round happily naked all the time whistling. Yeah. They get weighed naked, pop a towel on and take off yeah. three ounces. How exact have those measurements got to be? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Pop a towel on. I mean, yeah. unless you're going on the space shuttle, <laughs> I reckon you could give or take a couple of, uh, ounces. couple of stone. Yeah, a couple exactly, of ounces. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely right. Well, we've we've put that to bed. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Right, Carl. Go on. It's that time again. You better be ready. Like... Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right. Well, this this uh, this week, what we what we covering is. Um, do you know, like they say, monkeys are pretty close to humans. Well, when you say monkeys, you mean. Apes, I assume, well, and when you say apes, you mean chimpanzees. That. Well, no, because they're different um, species. They're all they've primates. Done, but... They've done a lot of tests and that. Like I said, you know, we've talked about the one that went into space. Mm, that was we've rubbish. Had ones that have worked in train stations. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the barber, next... was there a barber one? There, there was a barber one. He started off sweeping, didn't he? But he didn't immediately go in straight. Into, but he worked his way up. Yeah. Um, yeah do you know, apprenticeship. They do. They do a lot of stuff. Um, I've seen the salon, he was probably the top student. <laughs> but the thing is, it, you know, I mean, th in a way, this is linked to the one in the salon. Mm. He could cut air, but he'd never be allowed to work on the till, right? But these tests that they've been doing now- Why? Are they not trustworthy? Well, they've, they've had problems understanding money, right? But they've, they've got one recently that they've been teaching about the value of money. Mm. And showing it that, you know, to get this money you've got to work hard, you got to save your money, mm. and when it's saved, nice up, all bollocks. You can <clears throat> do what you want with that money. Yeah, it wouldn't but happen. At the end of the day, these monkeys aren't on that much money. Yeah, so and they wouldn't. They, 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 you could never, so, you could never teach a monkey the value of money. So, so the thing is, they've said to these monkeys, "Look, you know, there's your money." <laughs> they haven't said anything You're to the monkeys. So they have, Rick. Money. Please listen to the news. But <laughs> <laughs> it's the news. <laughs> it's the news. <laughs> it's important that you know they they know how to spend that money, right? <laughs> it's basic rules, really. It's what you teach a, a human about money, and it? it's the, what you teach kids. So about invest money. wisely, invest and all that. So who's teaching so these monkeys? Uh, so Carl, stop. Just some what? people and that. But who? Where are these monkeys? The monkey people. But but where are these monkeys? Where are these monkeys? I think being... it's in San Francisco. What is? Well, where are these monkeys though? What are they? Are, are they in a shop? Are they? What are they doing? Are they in homes? What are they They're doing? Just, just in like, a zoo. Well, probably just in like some sort of uh, science place where science people are checking out monkeys' brains and that and seeing how they work. But they're happy. They're not. This is them different that. to the the news at ten. So listen. Well, so yeah, but you can't you can't interrupt the newscasters for one thing, Rick. Please. <laughs> Sorry. Go on. So there's these monkeys, right? And they've given them some money, probably about five quid. <laughs> and they they said, right, off you go, uh, go shopping. See who comes back with the best sort of. How much can you get? You know, like in ready steady ready cook. Steak, well, right. they said, there's a fiver. Go and get some food. Anyway, some came back and uh, they were like, you know, they hardly had anything. <laughs> this is absolute shit. No, listen. They this is the bollock. Listen. But one of them, right, he, he was away longer, to be fair. Yeah. Right, he, he, I think he came back last. But they were really impressed because he sort of said, this is amazing that you've got all this. Can't believe it. Give us the receipt, right? Oh, this is absolute right, shit! Forget it, forget no, it. No, no, listen. No, 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 no. That is absolute it, shit. shit. No, we want to hear no, the end. No, 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 no. no. Look, look, hang on a minute, right? So they said, give us the, give us the receipt and that, and they looked at it, and it was all official, right? And, and, they, and they went through it all, and what they were really impressed by is the way that they always went for the sort of slightly older veg, where you get two lots. For the price of right, one. Right, you're absolutely- <laughs> so, And it just goes to show, This right, is absolute that, bollocks. Well, there's no it, way- There's no gonna, way a chimp went it's shopping not, and uh, knew what he was buying. It, it's I don't know why you lost me then. Well, it's absolute bollocks. Once again, you've made it up. You've probably saw a headline on some sort of half-witted mm. website mm. and you're talking shit. Right. Just to say, if you have any monkey news for Carl that you want to hear on one of these podcasts in future weeks, then Sick you can email it. Carl, uh, or indeed with anything, Sick at podcast at rickygervais.com. This podcast was hosted by Positive Internet. What does, can I just ask, what does hosting mean when you, in that sense? I don't know, but the guys at Positive Internet do because they're experts in this field and that's why I like them. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Uh, join us next time when, when we'll, uh, I'm sure, uh, waste another half hour of your lives. <laughs> <laughs>